What's up everyone, Alex here. Some of you have asked if I was going to talk about the Visions of Mana demo that was released a few weeks ago. And there's no doubt that some of you have probably thought that at this point, I wasn't going to do anything about it. So it would probably make you happy to know that not only have I been playing the Visions of Mana demo, but I've already beaten it upwards of about 15 times from beginning to end, and I just absolutely love it. Because if you go as far back as the Game Boy days with the first Mana game, then trace the entire series' history, you'll notice that what separates the Mana series from every other action RPG out there is Square Enix's desire to entice turn-based fans to try out a new form of combat, one that players can always choose to pause at any time, allowing them to figure out and strategize the best course of action. And so in this video, I'm going to dive deep into the visions of Mana Demo with these concepts in mind, talking about its combat, its new classes, as well as several things that I think can stand to be improved. Because after playing the demo from beginning to end 15 times, you're bound to find something. I should also point out that the gameplay footage that you'll see in this video were all taken from the PS5 version of the game. So let's talk about the classes first, and the reason why I am starting with this is because Val, for some reason, has one of the slowest classes equipped by default for this demo. This Runite class uses a greatsword, meaning every swing is going to be slow, but packed with tons of damage. I found a decision to have this class equipped by default curious, because the first impression that you'll get out of the gate is that the combat is slow. I know this because I thought the exact same way. But when you unequip Val's Elemental Vessel, which reverts him back to his base class, you'll find that he'll attack much faster, which is in line with what I was expecting from the game. That said, this simple removal of his Elemental Vessel prompted me to play around with both Morley and Karina's classes, which is how I learned that each of the characters have their own default classes and that Elemental Vessels enhance their playstyles. This reminds me of when you enhance a class in Trials of Mana, except you can mix and match these out of combat to your heart's content. Each class will have its own unique passive and active abilities and stats, and you can unlock up to 4 abilities per class in the demo. Going further into the criticism that its combat feels slow, I encountered an enemy that just might have reinforced this idea for many. This enemy was labeled Nemesis, which is a type of enemy that's much stronger than anything else you'll find on a map, so I knew that it was going to behave differently. Its most annoying move has to be its ability to zip around large distances, which, when combined with the slower run speed of your party, could have exacerbated this annoyance. That being said, you have the ability to stop time, which you're supposed to use to subdue this enemy, thereby allowing you to wail away at it without much fuss. This underscores a very important feature of Visions of Mana, which is how it's able to help turn-based players make sense of the potentially chaotic action that's happening, crowd control. And this concept isn't unique to Visions of Mana either. Simply put, crowd control describes any ability or tactic that literally renders enemies helpless for a period of time. It lets you help make sense of your current situation without it devolving into a jumbled mess. Visions of Mana accomplishes this by giving you abilities that can momentarily stun enemies, allowing your other characters to deal additional damage on the side. My personal favorite crowd control ability has to be Karina's Wind Attack, which can lift multiple enemies into the air, allowing either Morley or Val to follow up with their own aerial attacks, knocking out each enemy one by one. The different abilities you can unlock for each character's class do have interesting utilities and damage potentials. But alas, the enemies in the demo are quite easy and aren't beefy. Save for the demo's boss, which to me seemed to have too much HP. I know that others complain about how Tales of Arise or similar games enemies have too much HP, but this demo's boss, by comparison, started feeling like an endurance battle. It needed to have either died sooner or have more interesting mechanics introduced as the fight progressed to make the encounter interesting and deserving of that large health bar. The game also uses a font that is a bit difficult to read when sitting far from the TV, though it's perfect if you're playing on a monitor. 
Additionally, Visions of Mana also employs the use of a quote-unquote lazy lock-on camera, which is quite frustrating. Now, what does that mean exactly? Say you've locked onto an enemy in the game. You're expecting that the camera would take a more proactive role in positioning the enemy relative to your character, perhaps ensuring that it's always in front of you at all times. Visions of Mana's camera, by comparison, will only move the camera if the enemy somehow walks off screen. And even then, it'll take a considerable amount of time to chase after said enemy until it finally shows up on screen again. In other games, you could theoretically adjust a camera's perspective using the right stick. However, using the right stick in this game changes the enemy you've got targeted, and there are no quick options to swing the camera around, so it'll swing behind your character with a button press. It's in this sense that I find that using the lock-on feature is mostly useless, given how you'll only be fighting the camera a lot. But aside from the curious Southern Bale English accent that Karina sports, I found the presentation and music of Visions of Mana to be a perfect continuation of the work that we've seen in the Trials of Mana remake. In fact, it feels as if the Trials of Mana remake was used as a baseline when designing many of the elements in this game. And when you consider Visions of Mana as an iteration of all of the wonderful ideas that were presented to us in Trials of Mana, then you start to see how these elements evolve from said game. All that said, this is just a demo, so maybe some of the things I'm critical of are actually addressed in the full game. All that said, I'd like to know what your favorite parts of the demo are and what classes you've taken a liking to. Post your thoughts in the comments below and let's talk about it. Also, a few of you have told me that you only have one hour to play each night, so I asked my JRPG friends to recommend games that are less than 30 hours long in my recent video. I also have a review of the Trials of Mana remake, should you wish to check that game out. And you can find both of them right here for you to watch next. Thank you very much for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.